you are looking at the seven most powerful men in China, the Politburo Standing Committee. In Communist China, the party is literally the entire country. A parallel system with the de facto power. The general secretary of the party is the true president of the country. The party has its own constitution, its own army, and its own judicial system. The standing committee does not belong to the state in the same way that the U.S. Congress belongs to the U.S. state. The standing committee belongs to the party. The Politburo Standing Committee, in theory, is a subset of the larger Politburo, which is supposed to make the big public policy decisions for the party and thus the country. The idea is that the Politburo, a group of 25 people, is too large and cannot meet all the time. So, in order to keep things flexible, they elect this smaller seven-man, and it's always men, committee to do the day-to-day -day things while the Politburo is not in session. Eventually, or perhaps all along, the Standing Committee centralized power amongst themselves. There's only just one other committee with similar power and importance: the Central Military Commission, through which the party controls its army, the PLA. The General Secretary, currently Xi Jinping, heads both committees. Each of the seven men are given a portfolio of responsibilities. The General Secretary is the head of the party and often the core leader of the country. Second in rank is the Premier of the State Council. He runs the state bureaucracy. His portfolio is the economy. Third in rank is the Chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, a totally different standing committee. He runs the legislation portfolio. Fourth in rank is the chairman of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference National Committee. He is responsible for all people outside the party, minority parties, and religious associations. Fifth, the party secretariat. He oversees the party's bureaucracy, separate from the state's bureaucracy, and thus runs the propaganda portfolio. People tend to watch the seat in certain cycles as it tends to be occupied by the potential next general secretary, as he is being groomed into power. Sixth is the man in charge of the anti-corruption portfolio, head of the party's Central Disciplinary Inspection Commission. The man currently in the spot is said to be the second most powerful in China. Seventh is the vice premier, and thus the guy groomed to be next in line to be premier. Mao Zedong, for all the good he had done in leading the Communist Party, had centralized too much power at the end of his life. The Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution have caused great disruption to the lives of the Chinese people. For a long time, there was no way to decide the next generation of leadership. Mao Zedong constantly purged ascending comrades as threats to his power. Without any rules of the field, what became the most important thing towards the rise to power was horse trading and political schemes, a true game of thrones. In August 1980, Deng Xiaoping, China's consensus core leader, gave a landmark speech on the reform of the system of party and state leadership. It is not good to have an over concentration of power. It hinders the practice of socialist democracy and of the party's democratic centralism, impedes the progress of socialist construction, and prevents us from taking full advantage of collective wisdom. Over concentration of power is liable to give rise to arbitrary rule by individuals at the expense of collective leadership. Deng Xiaoping had risen to power, but not after his great struggle of his own. He had been purged by Mao Zedong three times. By 1978, though. He had gained significant, though informal, power, and he decided that he would be the last such person to secure power in this way. From now on, there would be a set of rules surrounding the way officials rise into the most powerful places in China. Every five years, the party holds an event called the Congress. At this gathering, the committee's leadership is chosen, and the agenda for the next five years is set. Candidates. For the Standing Committee and the Politburo, are voted in via a straw poll of elite party members. There is a retirement age of 70, later 60 years, for all those in the Politburo. This means about five of the seven committee members must retire every five years. The people ascending to the Standing Committee are almost always chosen from those in the Greater Politburo who are not retiring from service. The only exceptions to this rule have been the successors to the General Secretary and the Premier. Beyond the formal rules are the informal ones. This may not surprise you, but statistical analyses imply that what probably has the most influence on getting someone to the Politburo and into the Standing Committee is having work ties to the incumbent General Secretary. Being tied to the previous General Secretary has a negative effect, which makes sense since the new guy would be cleaning house. For over 30 years, China has been run under a system of collective leadership. 
and it has worked spectacularly in stabilizing the government and preventing the mass disruptions associated with single-man rule. But at the same time, it seems like the system may have worked too well. The Jiang Zemin and the Hu Jintao eras were marked with great corruption scandals, widening inequality and a massive explosion of debt. Xi Jinping's centralization of power may be a subtle acknowledgement of the need for a unified voice on policy matters. The next Congress, the 19th, takes place this coming fall and it is seen to be a big one. There are indications that President Xi Jinping looks to break many of the norms that have governed China for over 30 years. He is rumored to be interested in keeping CCDI Chairman Wang Qishang beyond the 68-year age limit. He is rumored to also seek a delay in appointing his successor, who, if norms normally hold, should be giving a seat on the PSC this year. Back in the Soviet days, people with very little official information about Russian political matters made careers out of quote-unquote reading between the lines, a practice called Kremlinology. This practice lives on in China today with the prognostications around the Standing Committee, leaders of 1.4 billion people.